Hey Stampin' Friends, welcome back, it's Sandy here. Today I am going to share with you this a spotlight technique and also the multi-layering stamping. And I'm going to use this MISTI and show you how to do the multi-layering uh, double time this time because we're going to do it on both sides of one piece of paper. You're actually going to need two pieces for the spotlight technique. So I've got two pieces of hammer mill and they are four and a quarter by five and a half inches each. You see that I have it in the MISTI and I have it lined up in the bottom right hand corner with the six. And I'm going to be using that mark all the way through this. So having the MISTI grid paper in there is also a great idea. You want to put your stamp halfway through and just pretend you have an invisible line like I just did with the pencil mark so that you're not overlapping your leaves. And so I have my outline stamp where I want it. It's now on the lid and I'm going to use the jet black and stamp the first part of the image. So I'm stamping each one of these twice so that I have a nice crisp back black outline. Sorry, I can't talk today. <laughs> Here's my second one. And I'm about to show you something really cool with the Misty. Leave that stamp right where it is. Pull those magnets off. Flip that piece of paper around. Line it up with the six in the bottom right hand corner. And use the line on the grid paper. Add your magnets back in. Get the dog hair out of the way. <laughs> Add your other two magnets just to make sure that it doesn't move and just, you know, I'm having to pull mine just a little bit out of the way. And again, I'm inking with the Jet Black, doing a double stamp of it. Now this is going to be the background. As you can tell when you look at the cord that's over on the left hand side, the um, card front is actually in black and white and we're going to line up the second image with that first one. So this is the first one. I've done all the black and white and I'm going to set that aside and now we're going to do what I call the art piece, the part with the color on it. But we're lining it up in the same number six. I'm not moving that stamp and I'm going to do the stamping on the front of this as well. I'm not going to go through both sections. So you see that I've got both of them done just like I did for the first one and I'm taking out that outline stamp and now we're going to start doing the multi-layering. Again I'm using the Altenew hand-picked bouquet and in that stamp set there is a booklet that comes with a diagram of how to line up the pieces and so this is the first layer and there are little marks in the diagram that show you where to line up the stamps. And so I have written mine in a pencil and I'm just using a pencil to set it in there. And I'm also using the same colors as I did in yesterday's video just so that there's nothing mixed up. And I already had them out. <laughs> so less work for me. Okay, so make sure that your paper hasn't moved. Again, with these solid image stamps, they sometimes pull your paper around. That's why I have extra magnets. And I'm going to stamp this image twice so that I have a nice solid image. Flip it around, line it up again. The lining up is very important. Take the extra couple of minutes to do that. It will really help make your finished product look spectacular. So again, we're doing the outline stamp on the large flower. Okay, so we're finished with that one. Now we're going to go to the second layer. And again, we're using the diagram to line up the image. Basically, it uses the top and bottom petal on the left-hand side. And if you continue to use that same thing, it makes it a lot easier for lining things up. We're going to the middle tone color for our blue. And you can go back to my blog. I have all the colors listed that I used in there. I'm flipping my card back around again, lining up the six. Now isn't this cool that you don't have to realign this every single time? Okay, doing my stamping. And again, I'm going to do it twice so I have nice coverage. Cutting that stamp off with my chamois. And we're going to the number three. This one's a little bit harder to line up, but there are three little lines in the image and you just have to be patient and get them right in there. And this one's up a bit. This kind of covers the bottom left corner and, sorry, the bottom right corner and the middle with the darker color. It just adds some really nice highlights. So flipping it around again, adding all my magnets back in, making sure that I'm still lined up. And there we go. 
Okay, so next we're going to start working on the leaves. So I have to move my magnets around to get them out of the way. Line my outline leaf out. So this is the one that's going to do the fill. And we're going to be stamping it with the lightest green. Add your magnets. Close the door of the misty so that you get it connected. All right, so I decide here, okay, let's not uh, reinvent the wheel. I'm adding the leaves for that top little sprig at the same time. So I'm going to do both of them and all in the same color. Okay. My second stamping. I'm going to flip this around and do the leaves on the other one at the same time. And I noticed when I, did, when I uh, okay, well, I'll stop talking for a second because I want to show you something. See how I have a, my finger inside the misty? That's to stop the ink from going all the way down. I'm just checking it to see if it's aligned properly. And that's a good way. Just stick your finger in there. That way you won't ink up something that perhaps you don't want to. Okay, so what I was going to say is um, we're going to do the outline of the larger leaves. And I didn't do a very good job aligning them up. And you'll see that when I uh, do my stamping. Um, I'm going for the, the flowers in that one that I just laid down. And then I'm going to do the highlight of the leaves at the same time. So as long as your stamps aren't really close to each other, this will work. So I'm showing you there where I'm lining it up, but I didn't actually line it up there. <laughs> it's really hard to do this when you can't stick your head right over top of your art piece. And I'm trying to keep my head out of the video. But this is also a great place to add your embellishments at the end of your card. So um, I don't throw things out. I just try and see if I can make it work. And so for this one, you have to be careful because you're going to be inking in two colors. The top one's going to be the light blue. The bottom one's going to be the dark green. So again, lining up at six, adding all my magnets back in, and this is where I decide I'm going to clean off that green leaf one, and I'm going to line it up a little bit better, hopefully this time. And I'm leaving that blue one where it is because it was just fine. Okay, so here we go, inking the blue for the top and the dark green for the bottom. And voila, we got a good one that time. Okay, so erase all your little pencil marks. And then I'm rubbing off the excess. I am going to take my um, frame dies. And these are the stitched rectangle wafer dies from Simon Says Stamp. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to line up evenly my flowers and the border around the outside. Adding a little bit of purple tape just before I run it through my die cutting machine. So there I've got the two pieces. There is a different way you can make this card. You can layer the frame and have it looking that way. That's kind of pretty. It's not the spotlight technique, but it is another fun thing to do. For your black and white one, you are going to lay that down onto your card front. And this is A2, so it's four and a quarter by 11 scored and folded at five and a half. So the art piece is two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. So I made the black mat a eighth of an inch bigger. And I'm just attaching that. And then I'm going to put foam squares on the back because I want this to be raised up just a little bit for some added interest. Remove the protective covers from the back of your foam tape. And then make sure your card's opening the right way. And then you line up your image. And there's your spotlight technique. You're spotlighting the center of your card. I decide it's not quite right. And that's why I didn't push very hard on those foam tapes until I could pick it up and really look at it. And I did just a little adjustment. And if you ever have to do that and you did push hard, just use your heat tool and heat it up and it will actually pull apart quite easily. So I want my sentiment to be flat. So I'm putting foam on the right hand side because it's going to be attached to the lower part of the card and then on the left hand side I used glue dots so that it would attach to the art piece which is raised up and then that makes it all the same height. And lastly I've got these flowering clover uh, new sequin mix from Simon Says Stamps and there's a beautiful light green almost translucent uh, sequin in there that goes really well with the green in this card and it's also um, pearlized so it has a little bit of a blue fleck in it as well and they're perfect for this card. 
So I'm just using my Studio Catchia wand and adding them. So there you go. There's a pretty and quite simple spotlight technique. All the supplies that I used today is listed underneath the video and there's also a link over to my blog where you can get the images for them as well. Thanks so much for visiting. I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, toodles!